Good evening and thank you for joining us for the final listening tour of the school year with superintendent and some of our school board members. My name is Sheree Johnson. I'm the director of the Office of Strategic Communication and Community Engagement. And we also have our superintendent, Dr. Bruce Benson, as well as our uh, school board members. We have Ms. Uh, Holly Hazard, Pamela Young, and Dr. Sarah Chase. We also have Captain Sean Kimmitz with the Sheriff's Office, so kind enough to uh, join us this evening. We also have Miss Ann Monday, right? She's with the consulting firm that is handling the new superintendent search, and she's going to want to speak to some of you a little bit later in the evening. Well, we host three listening tours a year in different parts of the county. It's a chance for parents in the school division to speak to the superintendent and the school board members in a town hall type setting. The listening tour is part of both the communication and strategic plans. This evening, you have the opportunity to engage directly with school leaders and provide input on issues that impact students and families. It's important for school leaders to have a conversation with parents. Improved community and parent engagement is one of the top priorities for the division. Most of you signed in at the door, and we really appreciate it. You also placed your questions on note cards. During the meeting, I will serve as the moderator and read your questions. The superintendent and school board members will answer the questions. You can also continue to fill out the cards with your questions, and the communications team will pick up the questions and bring them up here to me. We'll wrap up the event at about 7.45 p.m., and we're going to try to answer every question. If we do not answer the question this evening, we will respond to you within several days with information that you requested. Please be sure to place your name and email address on the card in case we have to follow up with you with an answer. Immediately after this discussion, Ms. Monday will speak to parents about the new superintendent search for the remainder of the evening. Again, thank you for joining us. And now I would like to introduce the principal of Ferry Farm Elementary School, Mr. Robert Freeman. And I also want to make mention that um, we have a sign language interpreter here if anyone needs to come up front uh, for that service. And here is Mr. Freeman. <laughs> Hi there, I'd like to welcome you all to Ferry Farm Elementary School, the oldest elementary school in the county. Although we are the oldest, we pride ourselves for successfully meeting the needs of all of our students, being all century learners, and with the support of our PTA, we have already met one of our initiatives to be a one-to-one -one device school in grades second through fifth grade. And our hopes next school year are to be school-wide, so we are working on kindergarten and first. I appreciate everybody for coming out this evening to listen and share your thoughts with the school board and the board of supervisors. And I'd also like to thank you guys for being here. This is a very important week for all schools here at the farm. We believe it takes all of us to create an amazing place for kids to want to come and learn. That's why we celebrate Staff Appreciation Week. I'd like to take a moment to recognize and applaud all teachers and staff from Ferry Farm and other schools at this time. Please stand. Tonight you have an amazing opportunity to ask questions of the school board uh, that will impact our students and our schools in the future. I'm looking forward to a productive evening and hope many of your questions are answered tonight or in the near future. Have a great evening. Okay, and now we'll have just a quick, brief introduction on a couple of topics and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, first we have Ms. Pamela Young who will discuss school safety. Ms. Young, if you want to discuss school safety. Oh, OK. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, our communications director, Cherie, has been attending the student safety task force meetings. We are launching a school safety awareness campaign in the fall at the beginning of the new school year to make parents and students aware that if they see something, they need to say something. We are planning to use a new app to take tips from the public on safety issues in the schools. We hope to launch it in the fall. The School Student Safety Task Force plans to release recommendations and findings this summer on issues or problems they have found in the schools. 
The task force is made up of school administrations and sheriff deputies. Stafford County Schools have also updated and repaired the 9-11 buttons in the main office of the schools. The tip line goes to the sheriff's office and the SROs must make the determination if they are in danger. This is a great step toward the process of securing our schools and keeping our precious ones safe. I do want to caution parents and SROs and administrators, knowing what we know today, who has been doing the shootings in the schools, malls, and waffle houses. So what I don't want to see is that some of the students get identified on this tip line. We need to have clear guidance on that. I would like to see monthly reports or something of that nature about these calls, and hopefully we have a pilot program before we put it in effect. I want to ensure the Sheriff's Office and, and administrations goes through some kind of sensitivity training if they didn't already done so. Mental health plays a big part in how a youth risk comes to a potential threat. How can we improve these threats? We need to put programs in place to educate parents, teachers, and staff. That's all I have on that. And I also want to finally mention that uh, reading, summer reading, is starts June the 1st. I have some books here. I'll put them outside. Uh, hopefully parents, I expected a lot more parents here to share some of this out, but um, it, it's good to send the kids to the library. You get some free time to just sit there and relax and read a book yourself. That's all I have. And if there are any questions, we have um, Captain Kimmitz. Did I say that right? To answer some questions. And our Director of Safety and Security, Greg Martin, is he here? There he is. To answer some more questions if you have them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Young. And then we have Ms. Holly Hazard. You want to talk a little bit about uh, growth and the capital improvement plan? Sure. Um, well, thank you all for coming this evening and also to our teachers. Again, congratulations. Thanks for all that you do. Um, you all make our schools the best that they, um, they can be, and we are an awesome school district, as you all know how much I feel that, that way. Um, the CIP. Um, that's actually something most of us know. It's the Capital Improvement Plan. What the Capital Improvement Plan is the um, plan for the county and the school district of what are the big capital needs in our county that are, are identified. This last year, we went into a joint process to try to make this process a little bit more um, engaging with both sides. Um, I'm going to hold my comments on whether that was successful at this point um, but I will say this um, it allowed us to bring forward the, the projects that the school district needs and an identified timeline of when those are needed I will I, I will lay out the ones that I think are the most important and the board has put forth their priorities we have identified number one as a uh, the purchase of the Fredericksburg Christian School, uh, which is on uh, Route 610 to the west, um, that that would provide uh, for our pre-K programs, which are using up a lot of space at our elementary schools. As a sidebar, a, um, our elementary schools today, across the division, are operating at about 93% capacity. So there's not a lot of room in our elementary schools. So that's one of the reasons we're ex experiencing that. Um, next, there was a the Ferry Farm renovation or rebuild. Um, I will, I'm, since I'm in Ferry Farm country, I know you all don't need me to describe that. <laughs> um, third one is High School 6, uh, which is very much needed. Any of you who were involved or maybe not in the recent high school redistricting, that was a very big need, and we do see that that is needed looking at our growth. Next, we have um, the elementary, the next elementary school. We are going to need, be needing our elementary school 18, and also we need to look at Hartwood as well because it is an older school, and I always have to give my Hartwood plug. We are still not on public water. So those are the five, I believe I didn't miss any, did I? Um, projects that we have identified, and we have identified a timeline with them. I apologize I don't have them, but I can look them up 
but almost all of these projects are needed within the next ten years if not five to six years but that's me speaking so we are in a joint process we will be talking with the board of supervisors next tuesday at four four o'clock if you want to learn more and you are around you can learn more about uh, the Fredericksburg Christian and, and why that is important to the school board but also the joint process the school the excuse me the county will be voting on that on June 5th and um, that theirs includes the courthouse is their main project uh, which the main project problem is trying to fit all of these projects with our growth that's going on I know I'm supposed to hit on growth, but I'll just say we're getting crowded. There's a lot of people coming, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Hazard. And also, uh, Ms. Ann Monday will discuss the new superintendent search. So, Ms. Monday, can you give us a few mm -hmm. remarks? I'll just stand here if it's okay with you. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to apologize for my voice. These, this pollen has really affected me today. So if I sound raspy, I apologize. But I feel fine. I just don't sound so fine. Um, my name is Ann Monday, and I'm an associate with Hazard Young and Atia, which is a national search firm for educational leaders. Um, but that's not really who I am. What, what I really am is a former classroom teacher, assistant principal, principal, and then in a leadership position in Fairfax County Public Schools and superintendent of the city of Fairfax Schools. My point is I'm a school person and I'm here working for Hazard Young and Atia to assist your board in making the selection of your next superintendent. The first step in this process is to get information from stakeholders from any of you here. If you are a teacher, staff member, parent, student, community member, in any way involved with our schools, with your schools, I would love to speak with you after this meeting. I'm going to be in the library all set up, ready to go as soon as this meeting is finished with. And I want to listen to you, hear what your priorities are, and have some good feedback from you so that as we go forward and begin to look at candidates, we know what is most needed here and we can make the best selection possible to present to your board. Just as a matter of interest to the community, so you understand the process, once we finish this phase, and there's one other aspect to this phase, there is an online survey. If you haven't already done it, you can access that on the, on the website of the district. I think it was already, the link was emailed to you. Please take that. We've gotten a pretty good response. We're very close to getting an excellent response, and then the data will be quite meaningful to your board and to us as we go forward. But after we finish our, our, looking at the data, putting that together, writing our report, we will be back here on the 22nd of May in a public work session, and we'll provide, we will present publicly what we've heard and what we see as the priorities based on what people have told us. That will be a public document, so expect to see it again on the website. It's something that you have a right to look at. We'll then go into a phase of um, interviewing and recruiting for about a month, and it is the hope of the board and HYA that by the end of, in, er, in late June, we'd be able to present a slate of candidates. If that slate of candidates is acceptable to this board, then they would move forward and do a, two, a two-step intensive interview process in July. Following that process, a preferred candidate is identified. There is a very, very robust background check, contract negotiations, and ideally an announcement August 1st or early August for someone to start by October 1st. But I want to stress to you, as I have with every group I've spoken to in the last week, um, your board has been very clear. They want to be right more than they want to follow a timeline. So they are prepared to wait until they are satisfied with the applicant pool before they move forward. But they've asked us to try to do the optimum. And the optimum is that you would know who your new superintendent is for the opening of school, even if that person cannot physically be in place yet. Um, I think you announced yesterday that you have a, you have a acting uh, superintendent, mm -hmm. Dr. Kale. Yes, Ms. Correct. Ms. Pam Kale. Yes. Pam Kale, who is very well known and has a, a depth of experience here. And 
I just have met her myself this week, but by all indications, she's more than prepared to see you um, through the opening of school next year. And I'm sure you'll have a great opening before, even if you don't have a new superintendent in place. So hopefully you'll join me after this meeting. I'll be in the library. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Monday. Thank you. And hopefully, yes, you will join her after we're finished up here about 745 and uh, spend some time discussing your thoughts with her. All right, we'll open it up for questions now. All right, our first one, uh, we'll focus on school safety, okay? What is your opinion on the proposed school resource officers plan put forth by Sheriff Decatur? I don't know who wants to take that. Um, Captain, do you want to take that question? Or? Okay. Hi, I'm Sean Kimmitz, representing the Sheriff's Office for Sheriff Decatur. Uh, again, thank you all for coming out tonight and for school safety being one of our priorities. Uh, recently, we looked at the school priorities. Um, the biggest issues facing law enforcement today, school safety, number one, the heroin epidemic, probably number two, and then mental health issues, number three. Those are all, all three very important to us. They kind of all run together. So this position is gonna be a pilot position looking to fill the, the missing officers at our elementary schools, trying to provide them some safety in those schools. Um, this task force has put together a lot of great ideas. Uh, we're gonna work trying to hire the best possible people. We're gonna look at former law enforcement, former military members, uh, making sure they meet our criteria and then getting them in there to protect those schools. At the end of the year, evaluate that program, um, see if we need to add to it so that we cover every school, um, determining exactly what those needs are. So I hope that answered your question as far as that position. Sure. I, yes, go ahead. Um, I'd like to just make a, another comment. I Certainly we are <laughs> awaiting to hear really the results of the task force, but I will speak um, on my behalf that as much as I think that law enforcement is a big piece of, of our security, um, I really believe that our mental health and some of those pieces within our schools, I think that's another way that we need to be funding. Um, a school that I represent has their own social worker in the building and I know that they have found great success by having an, a dedicated social worker that is not having to rotate among schools. Please know that is not anything about the social worker, it's just I think that when you get to know your community more when you are a part of that, um, I truly believe that we need to be looking at social workers and um, other mental health within our staffing needs to complement, of course, what the um, what the uh, sheriff's office is doing. Go ahead. I think it's on. Or. Okay, she's giving me this one. Okay, so um, the other thing I wanted to mention is some of you might be wondering why we aren't putting uh, deputies in every elementary school, why we're going with this pilot program. And part of that is from what Sheriff Decatur has told us, it's very difficult to find enough deputies to, to do this job. He, he shared with us the difficulty he has just staffing um, the force that he, he currently has. So I, I think we all would, would love to have um, full-time deputies, but it's difficult to, to find those people to fill the positions as well. So. Okay, all right, very good. The next question is, can schools in this area get more funding for police protection? I'll at least take a shot. I know we always are looking for the grant programs. I, mean, I have to look at Mr. Martin and stuff. I know that our county is always looking for um, grant programs and other um, sources. Uh, as uh, Dr. Chase mentioned, the SRO program is actually funded through the county budget. That is actually, they are not actually an employee of the, of the school district. So. But we are always looking for grant programs and, and other things. I know that they have been made available um, when the tragedy um, occurred at uh, Sandy Hook. I know there were many programs that were out there that started at the middle school level. I know we were able to bolster our SRO program through those grants. So 
I can only speak to. I know we are always looking for those grants, and I'm sort I'm somewhat hopeful that maybe the um, Commonwealth of Virginia will view that as a priority and offer additional grants and, and funding. Okay. Do you want to add anything? Okay. All right. What security measures will be implemented until a new school is built, like possibly a fence along the wooded areas? And then it's a two-part question. What can be put in place so these plans do not get lost when a new superintendent is hired? I'll give you that one. <laughs> you don't want to answer? <laughs> Uh, what, what we did during the task force is uh, we're reviewing our crisis management plans and we've rewritten the entire thing with the sheriff's office. We reviewed it, updated it, and the plans won't be lost because we keep them secured in our office and every school is going to have a plan of their own. Fences, on, fences around the school, we did something else. We added 911 buttons and every school, they go directly to the sheriff's office which is going to save valuable time if anybody has to respond to an incident. And do you want to add something? Sure. We are working very closely with the schools on that situation. Uh, the task force is, is going to review all of the emergency plans at each school, whether it's the evacuation plan, whether it's the school security. And then as we make recommendations, we'll implement those in the schools to keep the kids safe. All right. Thank you. And the next question. Will the task force be internal or external? If internal, would you consider an external group to be armed? I'm not sure I understand that question. It's, it's uh, Joshua Armstrong. Right, the task force is made up of sheriff's office personnel, schools, school personnel, and then fire and rescue personnel. And then they make re the recommendations, and it, right now it's for armed security. It would be an armed officer that we're implementing in the pilot program. Uh, they, is, is it just an armed security officer that you're looking at, or are you looking at safety around each facility as a whole? Both. So a recommendation from this is to start with three officers and a supervisor and implement that in the elementary school level, as well as assessing the safety at each school, looking at their programs. Thank you. All right. What's the proposed budget for school officers uh, discussed by the Sheriff's Office? Will that budget be shifted from educational support? Uh, right now, the SRO program is funded through the county and as a, um, through the Sheriff's uh, Office. I don't, I don't believe that there's any, been any discussion that um, there would be a shift to school funds because of the um, oversight um, within the, the, the sheriff's office is sort of my best stab at it, sorry. <laughs> I think that's right. Yes, Dr. Chase. But, but I do think that's a good question. Um, I think we always have to remember that, that really we just have one big pot of money. And so when the supervisors have to decide where to put money, if they put money in one place, they have less money to put somewhere else. So um, obviously it, it does have an effect. Okay, all right. And the next question, what does the school want to do for the school's in terms of safety. Okay, I think we answered that. That's Mr. Armstrong again. <coughs> Is your question answered? Yeah, I, I know, actually. What is the social worker okay. uh, going to do in terms of safety? Uh, besides being a officer, what would they do in school? I would say that the social worker, may, their, their main goal may not be safety, but it's communication with the kids is to identify um, situations that we may need to be aware of um, within 
school uh, within the school community because some of the um, issues that we are seeing as in these um, shootings and other things is that there may be a, a child that hasn't been identified that isn't getting services that everybody seemed to know but nobody knew or everybody knew but nobody knew who to tell if we had somebody on on site per, perhaps all the time maybe we would be better at identifying even though i will tell you my experience with our counselors and stuff they do a great job but we have large schools um i i represent you know several that are over 920 kids and there's not even and there's like a social worker that rotates so my my thing is I think that that enhances safety not from a <laughs> from my sheriff's department but I think it's just another eyes on the ground maybe working with kids on coping mechanisms some of those things because to be perfectly candid I'm not sure a lot of it's being done at home and so I actually think that the schools now are needing to move or be ready to um, assist kids because I'm not sure they are all getting the resources potentially they need outside of school. That's, that lines, was what I was thinking. Along okay. those lines, I also want to make sure that we know that we want law enforcement to give us security, but it's more about safety of our children, right? And um, we want them in a, a safe environment, and we want the teachers to be able to also be safe. We want counselors to be able to do their job and get to know um, the students. They don't have time to do that. I would like to see counselors, you know, walk the hall, sit with the kids that are sitting alone, identify those kids, make sure that some of the students uh, feel safe to come and talk to the counselor it, because they're the ones that are closer to kids that are planning on doing something wrong or or, you know, harming somebody else. So we, we want to make sure that um, kids that have mental health issues, that parents also don't feel that they're alone because sometimes the parent knows about the child, first and foremost. And then next, the teacher. But parents need to feel that they're not alone in this and ask for help. And that's why I think it should be a community problem, not just a parent problem, it's not a teacher problem, but we have a group of folks around the child, around the student, um, it would help. Yes, Dr. Chase, go ahead. Yeah. And, and I just want to remind people again, if you, if you look at the numbers, um, it's, it's much more common for somebody with mental health issues to take their own life than to take somebody else's life. And this certainly happens with our, our children. And so having um, counselors uh, or people that children can go to for help um, would actually cause a lot less fatalities than, than something like Parkland or Sandy Hook. Yeah. Okay. And our next question, please discuss the current plans to open a new high school which will be greatly needed. We could have a plan, but we need money. <laughs> Strike that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as I said, it is sorely needed. It is in the list of projects that have been submitted as part of the joint CIP process. Um, since I'm the first one that jumped on, I'll give my own opinion. Um, we, um, one of the big things that is of concern to me during at the CIP process at this time is because there are so many needs to address the growth that is going on and to address the needs of our older schools. We have a lot of needs going on right now. Any change and things that are added can move out the dates. That is what has happened for so many years. Um, Ferry Farm, I know, is one of them. All of us, um, Hartwood, all of us have had, Moncure was supposed to be built, I believe, four or five years ago. My concern, and I hope that the community stays and keeps the feet to the fire um, of the Board of Supervisors, that the needs that we have are real, and we can't keep saying, we're gonna slide it a year, a slide it a year. I, things have slid four or five years, and like I said, I know that the current elementary school growth across the uh, division is 94%, and the high school one, I believe, is about 86 percent I'm sorry I didn't bring my figures tonight but um, under the comp plan for the um, for the county 
90 percent is considered full capacity so we're really essentially there in my opinion we are pretty much full everywhere and we need to start building and coming up with how we're going to address our kids because i am not a fan of elementary schools that are larger than most of the middle schools okay be sure that you raise your card up in the air so that zach can see it and grab it wave it around and he'll come around and collect it for you we don't want to forget about you all right okay uh moving on to the next question i am a student in middle school recently my school was on a three-hour lockdown because a student brought a gun inside we were told that more police officers and bag checks will be enforced but when we are in may when will we see the change no name on it i don't that know sounds who. like that sounds like greg <laughs> martin know. or recently there was an incident at gale middle school where there was a gun brought into school it's a prime example of our see something say something uh, program actually being a success so a student noticed someone with a gun in their backpack as they were walking into the school they saw something they said something they told an administrator at the school law enforcement was notified immediately we took action school went on lockdown we started a search of the entire school which takes some time there's a lot of lockers we had to get our canines there um, it actually ended up it wasn't a real gun it was a BB gun so it was a little bit different from from what you're hearing yeah <laughs> yeah it's 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 in, in our in our it, and it looked exactly like a real gun it looked exactly like a real gun so we took the appropriate action that student has been removed from the school and we learned a few lessons from that as far as communication, um, making sure we work with the schools to get the communication out to the families. Um, I, was, I was actually there on the scene. First Sergeant Pomeroy was there, Lieutenant Jacobs in the back. We were all there for that scene. Um, we, the student safety is our top priority. If we have to leave them locked down all day, that's what we're gonna do to make sure that they're safe. Um, we all have children that are going to these schools. A lot of our deputies have children at the schools, so that's our number one concern is making sure your students are safe. And um, that that's really up to the schools um, we have to we have to follow the Constitution that's our that's our rule so unless we have some information that we can go into someone's backpack uh, we're as a law enforcement officer we are not allowed to just just randomly search people um, that's that's part of your protections under the Constitution schools have a little bit different um, take on it whether whether they can do that or not that's that's their decisions. If there's, in the school division, if there's a reasonable suspicion we don't need probable cause, we can search a bag. So we would need some reasonable suspicion as to why we're searching the individual's bag. So we have a lot more leeway than probable cause. So I hope that answers your question. So we do them when there's reasonable suspicion, okay? Okay. Will the task force officers be authorized to discuss citizenship status with the Department of Homeland Security? That's something we'll have to look into. Um, currently, we do deal with, with some illegal aliens in the community, but as far as them having any contact with ICE or any other immigration, um, that would be something we'd have to discuss at the time. Okay, all right. Okay, we're going to move on here a little bit to the Ferry Farm reap, uh, questions. Why has Ferry Farm Elementary School been on the CIP for 10 years? When are you going to take care of the southern end? All citizens pay taxes to Stafford County, not just the north. Don't look at me to answer that question. I've been saying the same thing for six years I've been on the board. Well, I mean, there, there's been a lot of um, schools, Hartwood included, that have been on there. And again, like I talked about sliding, it, it continues to slide. The school division is not in charge of the debt service. 
for the CIP, and it is not something we can fund from our operational budget. I can honestly tell you I'd much rather pay you guys than have to have 10 and 30 million dollars worth of um, that. We also do it through a bond. Um, all of this is done through bonds, as I understand it. So what has happened is these projects have been in there, and um, before the joint CIP process, it was a, the school passed a CIP, and then the county took that and decided what they wanted to do with it. They put the projects where they wanted them. I believe that the hope with this joint CIP process was to get a dialogue going of saying, well, let's talk about where these projects were going. I will say, and I have to, I have to admit it, I was in favor of us starting that kind of dialogue. We have gone through one year of the process. All I will say is we'll see if I'm still in favor of it in about after June 5th, which is when they vote on their on the CIP. Um, Ma'am, we're going to need for you to write your question on a card because that's not fair to the other people that have. So, yes, yeah, so write your question on a card and we'll get to it. So we're going to move on to the next question. So the next question is, I am surprised that the newspaper spoke of a renovation rather than a rebuild of Ferry Farm. I thought a renovation was more costly. Can you please address this concern? Um, I, I can try. Um, the, the school board said over the recommendation of uh, first Fredericksburg Christian, then Ferry Farm, and we, uh, I, I think Mr. McCosker is at the point where he would just like anything done for Ferry Farm, and we did ask for renovation or rebuild that both of those be considered. And it really comes down to the Board of Supervisors and, and how much money there is. And, and they are concerned about the cost of high school, uh, high school six and elementary school 18. And so, their courthouse. And, and the courthouse. And, and please understand that the courthouse is not a choice. I think a lot of times people think the courthouse is a choice. The, the, the judge can sue the school, the school the, sue the Board of Supervisors and get their courthouse. So it's not really a choice. Okay, so let's, um, let, me, let me chat a little bit about the CIP. So the CIP process, uh, <coughs> last year the board went to a joint CIP process with the Board of Supervisors. Uh, at that point, Ferry Farm was on for a rebuild. Uh, starting next year, we were, start, we were gonna start dumping money into it. Uh, the board of school board decided, and I didn't vote for it, the school board decided at the time that uh, they're going to pull out uh, Ferry Farm from the rebuild, from the list, and they're going to throw it into the mix with everything else and, and vote all over again and start their process of discussion whether we need to do something with Ferry Farm all over again. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't like that. I was very angry. Uh, I said, well, you know, we've been waiting 10 years for uh, something to happen. And when they did a cost-benefit analysis of the of the rebuild uh, versus the renovation. It's kind of like the Stafford High School model where if you have to rip up all the concrete, up all the plumbing, rip down everything inside the school <laughs> and, um, and, and, re, and re-pour concrete and, 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 and reconnect plumbing and reconnect all that stuff, you're spending X million, you know, you're spending 80% of the cost of a new build on a, on a full renovation, so why don't you just put a rebuild and get new students and get, get more uh, capacity? Uh, for our for down south, right, and and bring all the, the stuff up to a to a 2000 you know 20 uh, learning environment. Well, it, that didn't happen, so uh, got pulled off. Um, I fought. I've been fighting long, long and hard now for for the last year. Um, what 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 the supervisors are are because of that 10 year. There's only so much money in that 10 year CIP. The supervisors are like, well, we're in favor of a renovation. So rebuilds out. Okay, rebuilds out. Um, that that that's probably not going to happen. Okay, anytime within the next, unless you want to wait 15 years for the rebuild, right? And so my argument has always been, so time out. So we pay taxes down here in South Stafford. We're already here in a in the 1957 build school. 
the second oldest to Drew in the county. And it's more important to build brand new facilities for kids that aren't even here than to take care of our kids and our taxpayers that have been here already. Is, is that what I understand? And this is exactly what I told the supervisors and twice in open forum, right? So is that how we're going to do business in Stafford County? Is we're, we're going we're to push off the, the, the planned rebuild, the planned renovation, the planned anything for Ferry Farm? Because we want to make sure that the kids that aren't even here have a darn nice place to go. That is absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Right? So. This, this. The school, the school board, the school board <coughs> heard the call for at least a renovation, and they voted, and they voted in favor for the most part of okay. At least we'll send over our priority list to the board of supervisors to say, hey guys, ladies, um, it's a priority. We have to take care of our old school as well, and we did that. So we sent that over, and so now they're in this, in this, in this place where. You know, they don't want to move the high school back a year. And, but there's a really good opportunity here, and the supervisors need to hear from you. You know, there's some money to be done to take care of Ferry Farm, and it'll probably be a renovation, okay? But it's to take care of it and take care of it back on the old schedule, 19, 20, 21. There's money to do that. But right now, they're talking about the, the buying of Fredericksburg Christian for the pre-K kids at, at the tune of $10 million, which here nor there, it's, it's not a bad idea, but listen, that's not my fight, right? My fight is to take care of my school right now, which should be our school and our supervisor's school, all of them, to take care of our children down here, right? But here's the trick. Even if the FCS dies a painful death and goes away, now they're talking about dumping, you know, Mr. Haran and, and crew are talking about dumping millions of dollars into old Moncure now to make sure that we're taking care of those kids. If that happens, if the old Moncure dumping money into that happens, Ferry Farm will not get a penny. I guarantee it. Okay, so that is my spiel on Ferry Farm. You got to go talk to the supervisors. I'm continuing to talk uh, to make sure that we're getting taken care down here. Uh, of, of our kids, okay? I'd like to make so, at least a um, comment. So wait, I'm sorry, okay. I just wanted to make sure Ms. that- Young, then Miss um, Hazard, okay. I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that it's about the students, that all students should have a clean environment to thrive in, <laughs> right? And so- Okay, so, all right. S settle down. So settle I, I, I was I was getting ready to say that to employees administration. They're, they're good. They're good with me. I like this. <laughs> um, but I want you all to help me when we talk to the board of supervisors. I want to see you all there. Um, we're there. We will fight for you. We will fight for the school. We're, we're backing um, Mr. McCosker. I, I like him. So, but so yeah. And I'll back him, and that's where the votes came from. But um, we need to get it done. It's about a clean environment, healthy for everyone. Uh, it's well deserved. It needs to happen. As a matter of fact, North and South they build a school, high school and an elementary school every year. We're we're growing county, and it's not about North and South. Let me tell you, there there is a barrier in between. There's no, you can't build that that area. So that's the reason why there's. They're south and north, but it's it's about all the entire Stafford County, right? We're in this together. Yes, Ms. Hazard. I'm sure it's not going to be popular, but I'm going to go ahead and say my thoughts. Um, I know Mr. McCosker said this is Mr. Haran's idea. It is not. This was brought to the Board of Supervisors asked us to now look at Moncure. We have flip-flopped on it. If I really had my shoe, I would bring it up there because it was don't build at Moncure. Oh my gosh, you are building. Now you're not. They have changed three times. So all of a sudden, their great idea has become let's build at Moncure instead of Fredericksburg Christian. Well, let me tell you what that's going to cost. That's double the cost. It's almost $20 million. So my concern, and this is what I would say, we do need to deal as a county with the rising pre-K classrooms in our schools because we are running out of space, whether it's here, each school has to deal with that. I believe that a facility also can also maybe have some um, 
synergy of having like classes together. Also the Head Start, so it is a, a north and south. Fredericksburg Christian, to be honest, came out of, wasn't one we found. Sometimes opportunities drop in front of you and you get a building with 21 classrooms ready to go. My concern if we don't buy um, Fredericksburg Christian, I believe we do need to buy it. We can expand it, but the problem with that is let's expand it later. Buy Fredericksburg Christian, deal with our pre-K thing, but if they instead choose Moncure at 20 million, the timing is the same year as um, Ferry Farm uh, and the courthouse and their idea, the Board of Supervisors idea on Moncure. I am not going to say to you all which one, which one of those three projects will lose, but I would, give, I would tell you my idea. So my thought is we should buy Fredericksburg Christian, spend the $10 million next year, then there is money available for Ferry Farm in two years later to start that process. But if, it, if we don't buy Fredericksburg Christian and they say, you're going to build at Moncure in two to three years, there is no debt service to be able to do that. That is just my candid thought. Yes, Dr. Chase, go ahead. Am I on here? I, I also just wanted to mention with, with uh, Fredericksburg Christian, you may know that um, Head Start is at Melchers, and there are a lot of early childhood special education programs at Melchers. If we purchase Fredericksburg Christian, half of the classes at Melchers should be up in the northern end of the county. That means there are an awful lot of two and three and four year olds right now who are riding the bus from 610 all the way down to Melchers. So um, we are trying to look after all the children in the county and some of these very young um, children with learning disabilities being on those buses is, is quite a hardship. Good, good point. Okay, and our next question. How many schools have been built at the southern end of the county? How many at the northern end? there a date that we're looking since I mean <laughs> okay well there's there's in the last 10 years last 10 years let's see it would go uh, Stafford um, High School An <laughs> it would be Anthony so Burns Margaret yeah. Brent yeah. Con oh, Conway um, would probably be in between there yeah and those would be southern <laughs> Remember many times the, the, way, the way the places that schools are built are based on what developer gives us land or what land deal has been um, negotiated by the Board of Supervisors. I, I'm just saying that's where, where, the, where they're built. Okay. All right. Much choice. <laughs> and moving on to the next question, um, and I don't know, maybe you answered it, but what is the final CIP plan? We don't know. <laughs> You'll okay. find out June fifth. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, we're out of the, we're out of it. We've we've sent over our priorities, which we've we've listed. Now it is in the Board of Supervisors' hands. So yeah, and the best. I would suggest. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I would suggest making your voice yeah. known. In the, the one from <laughs> now, so I, I think for, for, for Ferry, <laughs> yeah, for Ferry Farm, I would, um, I think your your best your your best option right now uh, to get anything done was is if they um, if they put us on for the renovation next year and they start dumping money into it next year. If you don't see money getting dumped, you know, mil a million dollars in planning. If you don't see a million dollars in planning in FY19. <laughs> You know, one year, two years, I, you're, they'll, 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 they'll drag you out and they'll, they'll piecemeal and change little things as they see fit. That's my concern. Okay, and moving on to another question. Are there any plans to increase teachers' salaries? They deserve far more than they receive. Who wants to go first? So, so I, did, I, did, um, I apologize coming a little bit late. I, I, have a, I have a boss, too, and not just my wife, okay, so, <laughs> and my kids, right? Um, so, you know, there, there's some things that I think we have to, 
change for next budget season. I don't think I, I'm not allowed to be the budget chair. I was the budget chair this year. Um, I'm not allowed to be next year unless the board says, hey, you're going to be our budget chair. So, uh, so, um, but I think what we need to do once once we get everyone up to standards with our comparison divisions, um, we really need to start looking at uh, retention, not retention, but uh, we call them in-grade increases. So it's not just keeping, um, it's not just keeping up with the, um, it's not just keeping up with the, with the county surrounding you, but it may be at that 22 years, teachers get an increase. Maybe at 26 years, teachers get it. Whatever that, whatever that sweet spot is that we can, we can incentivize even our senior teachers and give them more money and get them, um, and, you know, because going, going without a pay raise uh, for a, a significant pay raise for a, for a good deal of time is not a good thing, right? It's no one likes it. Uh, we did give 2.5 percent. I'm sure I think I get things did somebody run over the budget when, before we got here. Okay, so we did give the 2.5 percent COLA, and that's for every single employee. Uh, and of course, if you make very little money, 2.5 percent is not a lot when you get the taxes and right. It's barely. It's not going to cover my assessment. Uh, yeah, and then of course we have the assessments, right? I talked to Mr. Mayowski last night, the tax man. He's he's not happy with me, but um. So you have the 2.5 percent, and then you have the um, the paraprofessionals that the board, the school board, promised to get you all up until at least the the bottom uh, of your market, which was 2.1 million dollars just for the paraprofessionals bus drivers and bus monitors, right? And I think that that's a significant amount of money seeing that across the whole school division, we gave $5.2 million to, you know, to, to everybody as a raise. So we did that. And then $1.8 million were given to teachers on the zero to 11 to get them uh, up to comparison division. So now they, starting next year, they will be uh, in comparison and we won't have to spend as much money uh, on, on those positions. We did some really good things, like we got uh, three focus teachers for the schools that were sharing them, like Con or like um, like Falmouth and and some and some others, which is uh, which is a good parity issue. You know, we need to take care of all the kids across the board. And then we had 77 or 75 other positions uh, that were brand new, from diagnosticians to a lot of special education. About 53 was about this, and growth and growth and special education. So that was the bulk of our you know, roughly $10 million worth of money that we had to spend, new money, new money. You know, remember every year it's, you, you always have to pay the 260, $270 million to keep your, to keep your budget going, not to fire anybody, right? And then whatever you add on top of that, that's the new money. So we always need new money. And so we had 10 million in new money. And just my last point, and then I'll let Holly, I know she's jumping at the bit. Uh, the last point <clears throat> was that, you know, I do recognize that the administrative assistance came in um, and they really, and their voices were heard across the board, I believe, you know, and the staff. And so we're really going to look hard at the administrative assistance next year um, for a targeted uh, uh, increase that's well deserved. So, and you all know that, you know, my wife and I, uh, we, we kind of know who runs the school, right? Uh, at least at the, the 30 school levels, and it's usually the two or three or four admin assistants in the, uh, in the office. We are going to have to have a nice discussion off that topic a little bit about whether the, th the 11 or 12 month. Um, don't get started right now with the 11 to 12 month, but um, uh, we are going to have to have a chat about that. So we figure out what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. Yes. Did you need? I you guess just or, go ahead. I'm sorry. Miss Hazard, did you? Uh, if j just in general, um, since I've been on the board, when I came on um, just about five years ago. I have to say that our compensation was was a mess. We were out of market. I will say to um, Dr. Benson to thank him for coming in because what we have always been told from the Board of Supervisors is prove your case. Well, I think we have proved our case. You all are out of market. You all should be paid more. However, our challenge is always going to be is will we raise taxes because in Stafford County, we don't have the business tax base. You look at Spotsylvania, um, we are 78, a little over 78, almost 79% of our tax revenue is based on our real estate and our personal property tax. In Spotsylvania, it's 64%. So their businesses pick up that 15%. So if their businesses are doing really well, they're doing great, there's a lot of revenue generated. This year, the revenue was 
something. I'm going to round, and I'm not a math major, so please, um, please know most people would run if they saw me in the math classroom. But it was about $17 million, and we got 6.4. Okay, my loose division is we got about a third of the new revenue. I think that's something that Stafford County residents will have to decide, is that enough? Dr. Chase, uh, Ms. Young, okay, go ahead, Ms. Young. I just wanted to mention that you have your house budget and sometimes it's tight. And you have to decide if you, how much groceries you're gonna buy and you know that you have to pay the mortgage or your, your rent. And that's what we're trying to do, but we set out, especially the new board members, set out that I didn't care if the paint was going to fall off the wall. I wanted our teachers to be compensated. And that's what we did. So we're, we're hoping that you all appreciate what we were able to do with the money that we had. We do have some compliance positions and things of that nature that we have to cover. And hopefully the next year the Board of Supervisors remembers that it starts from where they left off. You can't go backwards anymore. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, and our next question. How does the school board feel about rotating the principals of Stafford County Schools? Maybe not yearly, but on a three to five year basis. People have a tendency to become too settled and policies fall to the wayside. Can I be heard? Um, I, I think it's a, an, an idea that we should really give some thought to. Um, I, I think that <laughs> I, as somebody who has taught it at a number of different institutions, I can tell you that you learn a lot by being in a new environment. Um, so I'm not opposed to that idea. Anybody else? Okay. So, All right. Just real quick. So that's, um, you know, that's an idea. Um, I think I think years ago we started, I think when, when Ms. Dr. Benson first got on board, we were kind of chatting about high school, at least at the high school level, to make sure that the high school principals are kind of, uh, but elementary, you know, but I, I know uh, high school, and, and that, that's an idea that we'll talk to the new superintendent about um, and see where they're at with it. I mean, I think, I think there is value of kind of changing up the leadership, at, at least at the high school level first, and see how that goes kind of look at it and then and take it from there because you know the high schools they have that whole very you know I got I'm an IB and I'm an AP and I'm an you know it needs to be I'm a I'm a high school I'm a, I'm a leader at the institution and I'm gonna change you know um, I'm gonna take you know so that's just my thought too so I'm, at the high school level I, I, I am not opposed to it at all I, I, I believe that if you have standardization policies, processes, and procedures across the board that uh, all principals adhere to, you wouldn't have to change your principal. Some folks like who they have, and if you change them out with somebody that they don't like, they might run. Uh, I want to keep my teachers, right? Yeah. All right. The next question. Can someone clearly explain how does the community replace a principal who is not doing a sufficient or good enough job in the schools? Report. That's a Dr. Benson question. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going that way. Don't do it, I'm Prince William. So, you know, it's an important part of the evaluation process to, to make things known that need to be improved. Um, we have uh, standards that are set forth by the Commonwealth of Virginia for, um, for principal performance. Uh, it, is, it, it is a challenge in lots of divisions all across the Commonwealth to do that. Uh, we have held folks accountable for, um, for, for delivering improvement in terms of student achievement, for looking at what the uh, climate is like in the, in the schools. Um, and when we identify areas that, that need additional growth, we make that part of the uh, improvement plan going forward into the, um, into the next year. Uh, you know, sometimes it comes down to a personnel matter, in which case you can't really talk about the details associated with someone's um, performance. Uh, sometimes there are things that are egregious in nature that require um, an immediate action, which is different than working on trying to um, trying to improve. So I, you know, I think 
that uh, in the last couple of years that, that we've done a pretty good job of holding folks accountable for delivering positive outcomes in the schools, identifying areas that need to be improved. And I think we've seen some of that improvement, but we've also, um, I think, done the hard thing in, in helping folks understand that, that, um, that it's not an option to not improve. So I'll leave it at that. Okay. You know, I like to say that you know, 35 years in the workforce, either receiving you know, feedback from your boss or giving, giving feedback as a boss, whether it's been a police officer or, or a soldier or, you know, whatever my, where my boots were on the ground. Um, it's not an easy thing to sit down and tell somebody, you know, it's the, probably one of the hardest things to sit down and tell somebody, hey, you're not doing this right. You know, I've, I've, I've written this out. I've, I've asked you if you understood what you're supposed to do. And, and then you, now we're talking about it and here's where you need to improve and if you don't improve by this time then we're gonna we're gonna have to tighten you up a little bit um, so it's not an easy thing to do anyway but we really do have to make sure that you know the the leaders are, are giving feedback to their subordinates okay that's something that I think the whole board has been but that's not the board's job okay that that it really is the superintendent's job and his assistant superintendents so and um, so anyway, that's, it's not an easy thing to do, but it needs to get done. Yeah. Okay. And Dr. Chase. Yeah. And I would say that, that um, you know, if you're having a problem with a principal, you should first talk to the principal and see if the principal understands what your issue is. And then if that's not getting a result, then you would go to the next level. Um, and if you say nothing and you just complain about it to each other, then the superintendent will never know there's a problem and nothing will happen, right? So if, if nobody is told, there's nothing that will happen, right? See something, say something. And I also want to add that um, we have Ms. Carrie Neely here, if you could wave. She is the chief elementary officer. And we have Mr. Tom Nichols, mm -hmm. our chief secondary officer. So Carrie, is the supervisor for the elementary school principals and Mr. Nichols is the supervisor for the middle school and the high school principals. So as Dr. Chase was saying, if you need to go a step higher and speak with someone, those two individuals are located at central office and maybe you could speak with them as well. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Is there any way we can reduce the requirements of standardized testing at the end of each year? I wish. <laughs> well, we don't. Control we it. can't. But the state has been helping us in the last couple of years, and uh, there's a movement to uh, an alternative assessment model that we will be implementing in Stafford. So there, there will be a reduction of testing. Will uh, standardized testing disappear altogether? Well, probably not. Um, but there, we're also getting an opportunity to award some of our own uh, local uh, verified credits for high school level courses if student scores fall within a, a certain range and we can um, uh, demonstrate that the student has has essentially mastered the, the standards for the class but simply failed to pass that um, pass that assessment I, I think that Virginia will for the foreseeable future have some means of, of accountability that they hold all school divisions in the Commonwealth to I think we have a lot more flexibility than we had um, t 10 years ago okay so our next question Stafford County has the 20th highest median income of any county in the USA. What will it take to get the Stafford County Public School District on the top 20 list nationwide? I, I'm going to let Holly talk about it, but I just wanted to make the comment. Um, so we have about 28,000 students and maybe one or two parents of those students. We're in a minority in terms of trying to get the taxes increased. So some people don't care about the school system, but when you moved here, when we moved here, the first thing was in our mind is how is the school system? We didn't look at the church first, we looked at the schools and then we moved. But we are the second highest employer in the county. So we employ the people, we live here, our, our kids go here. So some counties have 1.05 tax rate. We're at 99 cents and we were, yay, 99 cents. But, and then we don't eat and, 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 and buy here in Stafford County. We go to Fredericksburg, we go to Central Park, we go to Spotsylvania, Springfield. And, and so asking, 
ask the question, you know, we, we need that money, we need something to happen, something have to give. So I'm hope it's sinking in where it is not us, we, we want to do it, um, but that tax rate needs to move, something needs to happen. Or, um, I, I, I don't think it's just the tax rate, it's that we don't have uh, business taxes coming in. And so we need more economic development, and that is the responsibility of the Board of Supervisors. And I'll just make, if, if anybody follows me on Facebook, they'll already know my argument. So as much as that $93,000 figure means a lot, unless you have a local income tax, it doesn't mean anything because we don't tax at a local level on income. It is only, as I stated earlier, um, real estate tax and personal property. Going to what Ms. Young said, when I posted on my Facebook about this topic, I had several people write back and I said, the $93,000 figure is significant to the extent that there is a portion of our community that has a decent, hopefully, disposable income. The question is, where do they choose to spend it? And do you spend it in Stafford? Um, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but my kids know we don't buy it at Target anywhere unless it's in Stafford. Even if we're in Central Park, the girls will say, can we go into, no, I want to support my county. And I think that's something we all need to think about. I know that seems like it's just a few purchases, but if all of our purchases are being bought at Central Park and we have the same store here, now the, the, the same store issue is you know a minor one, but it's at least a little bit more income. Do we buy at in Stafford? I feel like I'm doing the you know buy American speech, but in some sense it really does make sense. Meals tax. Do we want to have it there? Do do we do it here? But the business issue, I've already you know I've already given my spiel on that. But that's something to think about when you go and you pick the local Target or the local Walmart and not the one. And please know I don't hate Spotsylvania and the city, but I hate when they get our money. Okay. And our next question, if one of our focal points is the C5W, why has the county decided to cut all funding and support for Destination Imagination, a program that focuses on each of those qualities? Yeah, I, I didn't know. So, so we cut all the money for Destination Imagination? <laughs> See, we don't know. Here's the, mic. Go ahead. Here's the mic coming, right there. So I'm not 100% sure because that's in Dr. Strike's budget, but I know the conversation has been um, a concern of safety. Um, number one, because our destination imagination teams don't just practice within our schools, they practice at home. But another conversation has been that um, our bands raise their own money, um, and so we're paying uh, you know a, a fair amount of money for folks who go to global um, which our bands if they're competing and moving on they don't get that same kind of support so it's also um, a parity issue um, that's kind of all I can speak to right now sorry I think that's a get back to you maybe <laughs> yep we can I don't have yes I have the name and the email so I can get back to them yes um, is it true that central office employees are getting a 10% pay raise while the rest of the county employees are getting a 2.5% pay raise? No, I hope that's not, not no. true. No. <laughs> and if you know something we don't know, let us know. <laughs> um, it's our, the budget we passed gives central office employees the same 2.5% increase that everybody else is getting. What is SCPS's plan to keep tenured teachers on staff? We're now losing teachers to southern counties. Tom, do you want to take that, take that or? Mm -hmm. well, Mr. McCosker, I thought you kind of talked a little bit about the retention well, bonus. Well, that's all you're going to talk about. Um, yes, that's an or, idea. Or, or Bruce. Well, so we, we talked about look, looking at another model once we got um, uh, teachers to the meeting of the market, which we've done, what the board has done, and we, we expect that will be adopted at our special called meeting. So we will have hit that target. There are some other strategies I think that the board should consider uh, going into the next budget cycle that might look like uh, career enhancements above the midpoint. 
uh, for folks that have spent all of their career here in Stafford County Public Schools. But we would we would want to to from my perspective to limit it to folks that have spent their career here in Stafford County Public Schools. So it would be you know you've got somebody who's um, let's say at 20 at 20 years there's a permanent bump up in their base compensation because they hit 20 years you go to 25 and there's another bump up in their base compensation that is permanent uh, but for folks again that have spent the years with with us so I don't think it would be appropriate to have somebody come in you know with 19 years of experience and then the next year they hit the 20 and they get this career enhancement to their to their scale and then there might be some other strategies that could be used on the on the below 15 year scale uh, like retention bonuses you know if you hang on with us for five years you get a one-time retention bonus but it does not impact your base your base salary so I think the division will be in a position to explore some some kind of interesting ways to hang on to folks both folks that want to make um, Stafford County Public Schools their professional career home as well as uh, getting folks to stay on for a little bit longer on the um, the entry side of our scale so I would I would encourage the board to to look at some of those models during the next budget process okay so the next question why can't the school board and the Board of Supervisors work well together why does there seem to be a lot of distrust or maybe lack of respect the relationship seems to parents um, thank you so much mm -hmm. having a hard time but thank you parental from which which side are, are we when you say parental what do you mean which side and we, we need the money but <laughs> we need their money so that we could help the rest of the, the school system but in, that that's in in, in um, no sense that we don't get along. We've been working well together these past year. We were actually eaten, even at some of the um, uh, uh, activities uh, together, and we're, we're working on our relationship. I know in the past, even me sitting on the outside looking in, it looked uh, a little bit stressful and uh, distrust, but we're, we're working on that relationship, and I think we, we made headways. Um, for example, my supervisor, and I from Garrisonville, um, our kids went to school together. And so we have coffee once a month and we sit down and talk what's best for our district. And um, I think Dr. Chase, she could speak for herself, but she does that too. So that's how I've been working with my board, my board of supervisors and I hope to continue to do that because we came in the same time. So we were gonna be spending these four years together. Well that, wait, 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 wait. That's the next question. Wait a minute, wait a minute, okay. All right, is everyone finished answering? Okay. Um, okay. So I, I have a pretty good uh, relationship with my counterpart. She and I were on the PTO at Falmouth many, many years ago together, and so um, we actually get along pretty well together. Um, but, you know, I don't know all the members of the, I don't have a close relationship with all the other uh, supervisors, but the, the one from Falmouth, um, Chairwoman Bomke and I get along quite well. Just, yeah, I have a good relationship, of course, with uh, Mr. Tom Cohn, who's our current acting supervisor. Uh, matter of fact, he can't be here tonight because he is teaching a class, a uh, night class, uh, on Thursday nights. And he passed, told me to pass on that he's upset about not being here. But um, I have a good relationship with all the supervisors. Uh, I think it's important to keep that relationship. I think it's important that you kind of uh, be, be very honest with them and tell them exactly uh, what's going on. And, Sometimes that happens with, with folks, and sometimes it, it doesn't. And so, I think well, well, if whenever, the teacher remembers that he or she was a teacher, it will help. Sure, it depends if that teacher wants to be president one day, right? <laughs> then you might not have a good one. They said no, but it, it's all on the person. It's all on the person. All right, I'll do it. I'll be the one. <laughs> I, I think that by and large, um, many of us get along personally with the supervisors. But I will say, and I will say that this year, um, maybe a little bit more than most, it seems like there is a lot of um, anger and inability to trust and we are both elected members. We have provided lots of information. 
it seems like there's a difference between the conversations that I have separately and then when we get into a boardroom there seems that there is a lot of sound bites or gotchas. If, if our goal as county elected employees, I mean co- county elected officials, is for the good of Stafford County, we, we need to be talking together and not at each other. Um, when I was first married, I'm going to give a shout out to my husband, um, believe it or not, sometimes I'm, we disagree <laughs> on things. And we had a disagreement, and this was within early in our marriage. And I'll never forget something my husband said. We were looking at a table, we were looking at each other, and we were going, you know, we were arguing our position. And my husband very wisely said, wait a minute, let's change this. And he got up and he came over and he sat down next to me. And he said, you know, let's look at the problem like this, not like this. And I would really love for us to be able to do that in Stafford County, because I think that is such an effective and visual way We're attacking the problem, not the person. That comes from Getting to Yes, one of my favorite books. Um, So I would like to get there again. I I think we all need to try once budget season ends. Sometimes the rhetoric can die down. um, But I think we need to all be sitting on the same side of the table looking at the problems like that. And you might have already answered this, but the next question is why aren't there any Board of Supervisor members here tonight to support the decisions that they are making that impact our southern students, our stu- southern student body? That was so, the- so once again, I, I talked to Tom Cohn probably three times a day. Um, and um, I, oh God, and so he, 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 is, he is teaching and, he's, and he wants to make sure that we, we take care of Ferry Farm and he, you know, remember he, he is a member of our community here and mm-hmm. he wants to make sure we're taking care of our kids. And so, yep. Um, I, I don't believe we extended an invitation to all of the Board of Supervisors to come tonight. Oh, yes, we did. We did. Yes, okay. I then, personally did. I'm sorry. I, I, yep. <laughs> yes, I did. I, I, I know for... Yep, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I know for Mark, he had mentioned, I mean, Mr. Dudenhofer, he had mentioned once to me that, you know, he will stay in his lane and right. get the information from me. He'd rather do that, but, um, you know, it's, it's his... It's his choice. Um, I, I know I ran for a school board for four years um, and to make a difference in uh, my community and for all students in Stafford County. Um, some elected officials, it's more about the election and the next four years. Um, but we all need to concentrate and, and, and in all fairness to the board of supervisors, they had, Dr. Chase mentioned it, they have one pot of money and they have a lot of things that they have to pay out. And it's about trust and we're getting there. It's about working together. And I'm hoping that this, these next years to come, uh, it will be better. And if you all do not like who is elected, then you know what to do. Okay, well, go ahead, Dr. Chase. Yeah. And, and I will just say that, that you know we ask them, but if you're really asking a question, sometimes the answer is yes and sometimes the answer is no. And so, um, you know, sometimes they, they have to spend the money elsewhere. Okay. And the next question, will the school board re-examine the pay ban for paraprofessionals? I don't know, it said LS and MD paras need to be in the middle band due to the intensity of the work and responsibilities required. I guess my comment would be is, um, help educate me on that. I I will be going to more classrooms, but send us an email. Um, Something that Dr. Chase touched on, um, social media is wonderful, but it also makes sure that everybody thinks that we know what you're saying on social media. If somebody ever messages me on my Facebook, I say, please send me an email partly for FOIA because I want to be covered in case there's ever a request. But also, it really says to me, I care enough to write an email to you and give out my reasons. And then I will go and look into that. But if there's just chatter on name of a site, I will tell you, I don't always reply to that because I want somebody to say, this is that important to me that I'm going to come and bring my issue my, my, my stuff, and then I can uh, then dialogue with you. I've been invited by certain people because they sent me an email and said, 
I don't understand this. And I said, well, I don't either. And then I'll go to their school or whatever. But the only way that I will do that, I am not going to reach out to you on Facebook, partly because of FOIA, in case we have to say, what's your opinion, what, what have you ever written on this topic? I don't want to look through 50,000 posts on my Facebook, I keep it so people can dialogue, and if you have a question, I, I say send me something specific, and then let's meet. Then I can call you. You're now a face. You're a person, as opposed to kind of this sometimes mob on, on online. So. Okay, thank you. All right, and this next question, uh, Ms. Ann Mundy, mm -hmm. you might want to listen. <laughs> Would Pam Kale be an option for superintendent, <laughs> not just a fill-in? That's actually um, the board's question, but I'm not. 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 i am sensitive foreign language study program for middle and high school students. Programs like Star Talk and Fauquier County already have it. Um, I, I love languages. I, I speak four or five, six languages myself. But is, um, can we fund it? You know, there are so many different programs that sometimes we have to cut and if we don't have the sufficient number of students applying to that. But what I would like to see is that every school has something excellent that kids do not have to move from one location to another just to attend it. Driving long distances, I think that we have that capability and an opportunity to ensure that every high school or middle school have something to offer the students and the parents. <coughs> okay, all right. And our next question, we'll head on back to school safety. Um, would you ever consider allowing teachers with, conce to, with concealed carry permits to be armed at school? Voluntary, of course. No. Yes, Dr. Chase. Yeah, so I, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for all seven members of the board. Um, I would probably say no. Um, and the, the reason for me is that if you have a gun in a classroom um, and you have small children in that classroom, you can't guarantee that those children won't end up uh, hurting themselves or somebody else. I say no, and I even go higher. If you in a high school, for example, and the students are just driving you crazy, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want that teacher packing heat knowing my kids knowing that. So, no. I, I think, um, you know, I'm also a no for that. And, um, you know, I think that in the, con but I, I'm a big supporter of having a, a, an officer in the school. And I've been fighting for that for the longest because whenever we talk about school safety, hey, we're not talking about uh, Johnny getting beat up or Jimmy's wallet getting stolen, right? We're talking about, when we're, when we're talking about school safety, we're worried about a crazy kid or a crazy person with a gun coming in the school and starting to shoot people up. There's only one thing that's gonna take down that threat, and that's another gun in the hand of a police officer to take that person out. That, that's how it works, okay? The communication when this crazy stuff goes on, when this combat starts, when the shoot stuff, when bullets are flying and people are screaming, then they're done that, right? The communication is exactly why we need police officers communicating with each other to take out the threat. We don't need teachers running out of the classroom and, and with the gun in their hand and then the police officer comes in the front door or comes down the hall and shoots them. So it's a very, it's a very chaotic moment when people are being shot and people are bleeding and people are screaming, right? It's a bad, bad scene. And so uh, communication is very, very important. And that's why I, I, I'm a big supporter of the SRO with a weapon in the school. So there's your, there's your stopping, that's your stopping point, right? And then the communication with that radio 
okay, that these folks have, that they can contact, they're in, in contact with the professionals at all times. Um, I know you talked a little bit about the SROs, but I think the SROs in the schools would be a wonderful thing. I think we could, they could be teaching classes. I think they could be, you know, really getting to know the kids. I think they can, you know, it's not just the weapon in the school. I think it's a whole kind of dare officer in every school. And I don't want to use that word because it's, it may be to, you know, some, I don't want to be a dare officer and, and you know, but I think it's a wonderful uh, idea to have a police officer with a weapon in every school. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just, the, the, that's just where we're, that's just where we're at now in, the, in these days. It's kind of crazy. Okay. Last two, last two questions here. What are the chances of schools getting metal detectors or bag checks to make up for the shortage of deputies in the school? I'm going to say very low, uh, <laughs> partly because um, I go to the high schools in the morning and getting 2,000 kids through metal detectors is going to make for a very early morning. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see that, and I, I mean, the only way I can see that, I'm not at this point willing to divert money from other operational needs for that particular purpose. If there was through some grant programs, my problem is, is it does become random searches because we will not get 2,000 kids through a search, and I have some concerns, not because of our, the people that are here, but just, I just have some concerns about how selection might be made to choose students to go through, and I, I just think there's a lot to be looked at before that, before we would engage in that um, thing. Like I said, I just would need more information, but I have some concerns. Um, Dr. Chase and Ms. Young. Yeah. I, I also, just, just as a question, what do we want our schools to be like? Um, do we want our schools to be a fortress that's impenetrable and that we keep all our children incredibly protected from everything? Or do we want our schools to be kind of a, a, a more open learning environment? And it's a question. Um, and, and so when we talk about um, you know, making it difficult for children to get in and out of the schools. Um, we are really changing the environment. So we don't want fortresses. We want a safe school. We want the children not to be anxious. Um, we want to identify those kids that have um, mental issues. They're not crazy. It's called mental um, concerns about that. but. I work in Washington, D.C., and the schools there have metal detectors. Unfortunately, I would like to reverse that. Um, we live here south, maybe 30, 45 minutes, and we don't know what it's like up north. Um, we don't want it like that. And I do not believe in random searches because, like I said, unless we have sensitivity classes that we don't check the wrong child for no reason. It, it's something that we have seen, and I'm speaking from experience, so I'm very cautious about that, and sometimes it doesn't go through your mind right away because you, you don't understand it unless you're in the shoes of that person. Um, I could sit here and give you examples. I have three sons and one daughter that went through middle school and high school. Um, well, I'll give you an example. My child, he's 18, but he, he has dreads, okay? He wanted to wear dreads, he wanted to be ethnic, and my oldest son wanted an afro, and I told him, no, it is not the time to wear an afro because they'll look at you and say, you know, what, you know, what are you doing? So when my youngest son wanted uh, dreads, his sister and his two brothers lobbied, and. Um, I said, okay, let's try it. Let's see if, you know, society is ready for your dreads. And in middle school, one of the teachers were like, you know, this kid, you know, we having problems. And I went to school for the teacher, and I'm like, um, this is my son. And it was like, Miss Allen, because that's my husband's last name, I didn't know he was your son. I said, you know, two of my other kids went through here. He's a 4.2 student. He didn't have a problem from that day, but if I didn't go to school and let them know that this was my child because I, I followed my kids through the school system. 
um, he would have problems today. Same thing in high school. Some kids were smoking some green stuff. And he happened to walk through the gate. My, son, my husband dropped him off, and uh, he walked through the same smell, and he was taken out. Now his father is uh, Jamaican-American. Okay, so it fits the profile, right? He was in the principal's office, and I didn't know about it. He didn't tell me. He didn't tell me until later on, a couple of months later. And so that changed his life, that moment in time. So what I asked the teachers and the principal to do, get him back in that chair where you put him, apologize, and reverse that feeling that he had. So we have to be very careful. Okay. okay. Thank you, Ms. Young. All right, and our, another question here. Have any of the Board of Supervisor members attended any of the listening tours? And the answer is yes, they have. They have attended other listening tours. So. Um, and also, um, we have uh, Brandy. Uh, she had a question for Dr. Benson. Brandy, raise your hand. Okay, Brandy, all right. Um, probably at the end, if you wanna just come up here, up here at the end and we'll chat with you. That'll be great, okay. Well, we wanna just talk with you um, off. Yeah, one-on-one, -on -one. that'd be great. <laughs> Give me that'd your special be great. attention, Brandy. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Chase. So um, I just wanted to, to follow up with something I said earlier when we were talking about how do you get a message out about a principal. Um, I, I also want to encourage people, if there's a really fantastic teacher or a really fantastic principal, you could share that as well. Um, and you could, could let uh, Tom and Carrie know that as well, and they could put that in that person's file, because we do have, my experience is the majority of teachers and administrators I've run into in Stafford are pretty phenomenal, and so the positive is, is just as welcome. That's a very good point, Dr. Chase, thank you. Any final comments? Any final comments? For, that's it? Yeah. Because then they're gonna go to the yeah. No, we have the superintendent search focus group coming up. Say that again. They're going over to the library for anybody to, to, to meet with. Oh, oh, yes. oh yeah. <laughs> Ms. Ann? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Would there he like to be a question. There's a any, any with a final summary? Right card? It's crazy. Zach's One question there, it looks yeah. like. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. All right, just so you know, Fairy Farm has been amazing. <laughs> what a nice note to end on. Thank you for that. What a nice way to wrap it up. Any final comments? Listen, I just want to say uh, thanks so much for uh, Bob Freeman mm -hmm. and Ms. Colucci to get to putting this together, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you, yes. And I know the administrative assistants made sure you got that straight, so <laughs> you're, it's okay. But hey, listen, thanks so much for you guys. This is just for me. Um, uh, I appreciate what you do. Thanks for the parents to come out here and listen, right? Thank you, um, teachers. Thank you. The te thanks to the teachers as well. That's right. That's right. Thank everybody, thank right? You, teachers. But uh, anyway, um, we need to keep pushing on the uh, rebuild or the renovation. You need to talk to the supervisors. you got to make time. PTO, you need to get jiggy with it, right? You need to get out there and get up, get, get three, <laughs> get three, uh, PTA, PTA, all right, get, all right, I'll talk to you all about the next date offline, all right. Okay. That's all I have. Well, this concludes our final listening tour of the school year, and this is Dr. Benson's final listening tour. Let's give him a round of applause for his service in Stafford County Public Schools. Thank you, Dr. Benson. Thank you for joining us. And remember, if you want to be a part of the focus group, we are meeting in the library just down the hall. Miss Ann Monday is already there waiting for you. We'd love to hear your comments about the next superintendent search. I hope this event has been informative and helpful. Thank you and have a good evening and be safe getting home. Thank you.